Hi, thanks for all the feedback you guys left in the last video. I'll definitely try to add more sets and boards to the my thoughts section, but it also kind of depends on what catches my attention. If you have a keycap set or a keyboard you want me to talk about, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. In the last group I video, I saw a comment where the person felt like the video wasn't too useful because you can find all this information online. And yes, I agree. This information is all publicly available, and I'm really not doing anything groundbreaking. So before we get started with the group I portion of this video, I thought that it would be a good opportunity to provide an explanation of how this video series came to be, and why I chose this format. Since I'm constantly browsing the various forums and websites that provide the group I information anyways, I thought that it would be nice to create a series to help inform people. Looking at the group by videos that are out there, the video idea came up because I noticed that many of the group by videos are either pretty long or focused on giving commentary on a few sets and keyboards. I'm not trying to say that these videos are bad, and I think that many of them do provide interesting commentary and opinions. However, I wanted to do both and provide all the information that I could find and provide my thoughts on the group by's that are interesting to me, but in a condensed form so that it's more digestible. This does mean that the majority of the video isn't super interesting because it's essentially just an information dump but it's a solution that I came up with that I think achieves both my goals for this series. Like I've said over and over again, this series is still a work in progress, and things can change depending on what you guys want. After all, if the people watching the video don't find it to be all that useful, it doesn't make sense to keep on doing the same thing. I hope I've provided some insight on the origins of this series and the reasoning behind the video format. It's definitely not perfect, which is why I sound like a broken record constantly asking for feedback. Without further ado,
Osume appears to be a new designer based in Ontario, Canada, and this will be their first set to be released on their website. One thing I want to point out is that Osume is not the manufacturer for this keycap set. They aren't partnering up with one of the bigger keycap manufacturers, and are instead collaborating with a smaller manufacturer that primarily provides keycaps for pre-built keyboards. According to a Reddit post, the factory will be using the new Cherry Profile molds that the folks at Osume have inspected themselves, and believe to be up to par with other custom PBT sets. The reason I bring this up is because before I talk about the set and my personal opinion on them, I want to provide this information so that you know what you're getting into. Although they say they've inspected the molds themselves, there's more of a risk in addition with inherent risk that comes with group buys, since the factory is not well known and there really isn't a good example we can compare to for their custom work. I did ask them a question about the manufacturer on their Instagram, and they replied that the manufacturer primarily produces keycaps for Durgod and Vortex. Now that we have that all out of the way, I really like the look of this set. The colors are nice and soothing and I really like the font chosen for this keycap set. The biggest drop for the Osume Sakura is the fact that it's only going to cost $59 USD, which is really affordable especially when looking at the average price for a keycap set. My biggest worry for this set is how it'll sound and how thick the keycaps will be, because after listening to some sound tests with the OEM keycaps for Durgod and Vortex keyboards, I'm not a fan of how they sound. As a reminder, sound is affected by multiple factors, so it's not a really good representation of how these keycaps will sound on your keyboard. I'm really looking forward to the group buy and I hope I'll be able to snag a set in order to support this new designer. I really like the inspiration since Spirited Away is one of my favorite animated movies of all time. However, there are some issues with the set that are partially due to the fact that it was very rushed from IC to group buy. I would love to show some screenshots of the geek hack thread showing some of the criticisms directed towards the set, but it was deleted. This set might have been okay in the earlier days of the hobby, but when you look at IC forms nowadays, they tend to be more fleshed out compared to the IC thread for the GMK Haku. There's only 3 kits, no desk mat, no artisans or collabs, with only a USA vendor, an Asia vendor, and a China vendor. And the group buy essentially started one week after the IC thread was created, which meant that the potential customers could not provide feedback to the designer to make changes. Other than that, the set looks nice overall with the colors obviously being inspired by Haku's dragon form. The novelties are pretty nice for the most part, but I wish that the designer didn't rush the set to group buy, because there are things that would change in this set. The train novelty doesn't make too much sense, because Haku never actually used the train in the anime, but I guess there was an iconic scene where Chihiro was sitting in the train next to No Face. The bath slip novelty makes a bit more sense, because I guess Haku did work in the bathhouse, but it's not the first thing that comes to mind when I think of his character. Rather than the train, I think that the bridge leading up to the bathhouse would make a better novelty for the enter keys. And rather than the bath slip, an onigiri novelty might make more sense as well. I think it's actually kind of hard to design novelties for Haku simply due to the fact that he didn't show up that much in the movie. Although some people really don't like having Japanese sub legends, this would be a case where it makes sense since Spirited Away is a Japanese animated film. However, for some reason, the designer didn't add Japanese sub legends to the alphas or create a kit that offered them. One thing of note is I've seen some people compare this set to the EPBT ABS Olivetti due to how similar they look. Since the GMK Haku lacks Japanese sub-legends, other than the fact that the spacebar and the legends are a different shade of green, these sets look essentially the same. To be honest, I'm a little surprised that this set managed to get approved by GMK, because I remember they had announced not too long ago that they were cracking down on anime-inspired sets, and those that may be infringing on copyright. I really like the inspiration, and I do like the colors, but due to the fact that you can essentially get the same thing for less, and the lack of effort put into the IC, I won't be supporting this set. It seems like this is the designer's first set, so I want to encourage them to put more effort into their next set if they design another one, and create a more thought out IC with a longer IC period in order to actually gather user feedback. Since this set is manufactured by Enjoy PBT, it means that the material for the set is PBT, which is a plus in my book. There are two base kits, one with hiragana sublegends and one without, both for $85. So if you're not a fan of having Japanese sublegends, you can get the Latin base kit. But personally, I would go with the hiragana sublegends because it also makes sense thematically. There's a pretty big novelties kit for $25, and all of them have pretty interesting designs. The fact that there are so many different novelties will allow you to really customize your keyboard in the way you want it to look. The keycap set also has 40% support and an international kit which is great for those who need it. I personally think that the Metal Artisans all look okay, but out of the few that are offered, the Acero Artisan looks the best. Although it's kinda cliche, a crane design I think would be better, 
because that's probably one of the most well-known origami. The Thok Artisan also looks like it could be a crane, but without the wings you can't really tell, so I thought it might also be a swan. I usually don't talk about desk mats in this video, but I really like the desk mat they made for the EPPT origami. It's not super fancy or anything, but I like the fact that it's instructions on how to fold a paper crane, and it has a really nice layout. This is literally the largest keycap set I've seen with 30 plus kits being offered. I've been following this kit for some time, so I was super excited to see the sale go live, and I did join in on the group buy. I was really tempted to buy a ton of kits, because I like how the set looks, but I eventually went with the Alienese Alphas, Icon Mods, the Alien Ephro, and the Arc Novelties kit. Even though each kit doesn't cost that much money, it adds up pretty quickly as you put it set together. Cat Space Dust offers support for most keyboard layouts out there, including 40%, Ergodox, and Ortho keyboards. So for those of you who are fans of some of the rare layouts, you might want to join in on this set. Do keep in mind that this set is in Cat Profile, so the keys are taller than Cherry Profile, but are lower than SA. The material used to produce Cat keycaps are also PBT, which I prefer. Like GMK, there have been major delays in a couple cat sets due to several reasons. One being the fact that this hobby has exploded in popularity during the pandemic, and as a result, more sets were designed and sold. And two, some quality control issues due to outsourcing the production to several factories led to Curative buying their own machines and creating new manufacturing procedures. It sucks when you have to wait a long time to get your keycap set, but hopefully Curative has solved the issues with the keycap quality. I'm personally not a big fan of the base kit because I find the color combo to be kind of weird, but I really like the Digital Nightmares kit. I wish that they offered the novelties in the Digital Nightmares color scheme so that you can match the set, but I also find the designs to be kind of weird so I probably wouldn't buy the novelties kit. This also applies for the Salvin keycap where I really wish they offered a metal artisan in the dark colorway rather than the original base kit color. That being said, I won't be joining in on this group buy because it just isn't the type of style that I like. I think it's cool how the designer took a risk with this colorway, but it's just not for me. As I've mentioned in previous videos, this is just my thought and it's my preference. I'm sure that many people do like the way that this set looks, which is probably why this set got around too. If you like the set, buy it, but for me, I'll be saving my money to spend on another set. The 65 starts at $299, which is a great price, but also offers a ton of customization options with an added cost. The amount of options is truly staggering, and allows you to really customize your board to how you want it to look. What's super cool is the fact that Mode has created a configurator page on their website, so you can customize your 65 before the group buy to see what combo you like best. The Mode 80 used a mounting system called the Stack Mount, but the 65 will allow builders to choose between Top Mount, Isolated Top Mount, or Stack Mount. As of now, I have not been able to find a type test for the 65, which may be worrying to some, but there are plans for streamer builds during the group buy period. Since the sales format for the 65 is unlimited, this means that you don't have to be worried about the board selling out before you get a chance to hear how it sounds. I've included the links to all the information about the 65 in the description below, so make sure you check it out. Although I bundled them all together in the video, there are three versions of the Neo Element that are on sale at different price points. The basic Neo Element G67 comes in at $265, which is a good price for a CNC machine gasket mount board. The design aesthetic for the Neo Element is very minimalistic, with no outward distinguishing features and a seamless design which does help on keeping the board at an affordable price. The basic kit comes in three colors, black, red, and blue, and has various plate options. Carbon fiber, polycarb, and FR4 come at no extra cost, but if you want a brass plate, it will add $10 to your total cost, which is really not all that much money if you prefer the typing feel and sound of brass. The next tier up is the Neo Element Plus G67. Unlike the regular G67, the Plus Edition is Cerakoted rather than anodized, and has much more color options. Furthermore, it features a brass bottom, which is different than the all-aluminum construction of the regular edition. This does come at a cost since the Plus G67 comes in at $440, compared to the $265 of the standard edition. This means that it will be heavier than the regular version when fully built, so it will feel more premium. Last but not least, there's the Neo Element Ultimate G67. The Ultimate version is completely made out of stainless steel to give it a more premium feel, but interestingly enough, the Ultimate version is lighter than the Plus version when fully built. The Ultimate version only comes in brushed stainless steel and does not have any other colorways, so if you're trying to match the colors of a keycap set with your keyboard, this might not be the best option. Furthermore, the Ultimate Edition comes with a $680 price tag, 
so unless this is your endgame board, I probably would not buy this version of the G67. I think that the best deal is the standard edition for the Neo Element. The more premium versions do have nicer finishes and more premium materials, but I think that this board is the most suited as an entry level board for more premium boards in the hobby.